Hi, I'm Laura Cross. I'm the writer-producer of Devil Dogs, and this is Lindsay Holt, the director of Devil Dogs. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm doing good today. Come a long way in the past couple of weeks. We have. We've completed 90% of our principal photography. Tell us why you got involved in this project, Lindsay. Well, you know, um, for me it goes back to a time when I can remember being in my teens and the older boys were going off to Vietnam. And it stuck with me for many, many years that growing up in the United States, foreign policy, the United States was always involved in other areas of the world. And I kept waiting for this time when I would be subject to going off to war and it never happened. So being born in 1958, I just assumed it was the luck of the draw. Uh, a niche of generation where the people my age, we didn't have to fight a war. And yet somehow inside, I always felt that there was going to be an opportunity for me to somehow get involved and step up and deal with that topic in a way that was meaningful. And um, when you asked me to come on to the project, I recognized that as, as that opportunity. So that was one of my motivations. I have tremendous respect for the men and women who have served our country. And I've always been moved by the personal stories the things that they were dealing with, not only from the battle, but also being in touch with their loved ones back home and having to balance the two things. Why do you think now is the right time to tell this story? Why do you think it's so important? Here we are in 2014, it's 10 years later. Uh, in a couple of months, it'll be the 10th anniversary of the Second Battle of Fallujah. A few months ago, it was the 10th anniversary of the Blackwater incident, which set off the first Battle of Fallujah. So it is very timely and unfortunate. The situation geopolitically in the Middle East has uh, flared up again. Did your experience and background as an artist and photographer help you become a first time director? Well, being a first time director has been a really interesting experience for me in that I have been a photographer since I was a very young man. So I just sort of felt like it was a, a new glove that I was slipping into. Um, framing shots and looking at light and all of that was something that I've been very familiar with all of my life. Coming into this very group-oriented, collaborative environment where you have a tremendous group of professionals and all of them are in sync with one another and supporting one another. It's been a really great experience. One amazing thing that you did, among many amazing things, was to reach out and connect with Colonel Mike Shoup, who was in charge of the Marine Battalions during the Battle of Fallujah in November 2004. Tell us about that. He could not have been a kinder, more gracious gentleman, and his willingness to tell me intimate details about the things that he went through and for example they actually slept in full battle gear with their M16s at their side and sometimes even with their helmet on uh, obviously they had to be totally ready to get up and go at any moment he also said that you know the speech that we were referencing was given several times so he had to move around from unit to unit and that sort of inspired the idea for looking on our set for a particular place where we could show him at dawn waking up and getting his thoughts together and then receiving his uh, personal security aid who brings this, um, it's a Muslim prayer book. This was passed up the chain of command. It came from the Anbar province from a tribal elder one of the primary concerns that Colonel Shoup actually conveyed to me it was important that people understood that United States Marine Corps was also dedicated to helping rebuild the city. I think we effectively brought that and introduced that into the, into the script. 
He also shared with you that he was a very religious man, and he he had right. a cross with him, which right. you also incorporated into that scene. He was very religious, a devout Catholic, and he mentioned a particular cross that he had, which had been given to him by a chaplain, and um, it was made out of olive wood, which is a very very soft, absorbent wood, and he wore it underneath his uniform underneath all of his battle gear, his flak jacket and everything. It was so hot there that the wood absorbed his body heat and the perspiration, you know, from being in battle all the time. It got very distorted. That kind of piqued my interest, you know, and I said, well, Mike, you know, would you please be able to take a picture of that? And, and he was very kind. He actually took the cross and photographed it and um, sent me the picture. And so then I was able to go online and acquire one. And so that too was written directly into the scene. You stepped in as the music director and really helped guide the original score as well as writing the original song for the film. Again, it goes back to that thing of our generation and growing up in a time in the 60s and the 70s when there was so much music that really shaped our lives. And when the opportunity came to work with somebody like Ira, um, I decided to go with it, you know, the whole idea of kicking in someone's door, you know, and having to go and do that. Um, probably something that you wouldn't want to do in any other environment, you know, unless you were, that was your job to do it. So that's what I was trying to reveal yeah. there. Yeah. I can't wait for people to hear it. It's a great song. Well, thank you. I think it's going to be something that a lot of people will relate to. Yeah. One of the main cast members, Michael Worth, who plays Riley is a photographer and you're also a photographer. Right. How did that assist you in directing him, working with him, and was there any part of you as a photographer in that role? That kinship that photographers have, where one person already knows the vocabulary and the moves and the things that one has to do to produce their work, uh, came in absolutely essential in, in working with Michael because in that particular scene where he's filming the helmets at the end, um, it was an emotional day for Mike and um, we talked about it before we shot the scene and we agreed that at some point he would just let go with whatever he was feeling on that day and he did. I just basically tried to be as quiet as possible and step back and just say a few little things that were really based on my experience as a photographer. It was a, it was a very powerful scene. It was a very emotional yeah, scene. It really Even was. on set it with really all was. the camera crew around and, and the lighting and everyone People were in up. tears, yeah, you know. It was very emotional. It, it, was, it was quite something to see all the crew sort of, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to play big on the theater screen. I look at the footage that we've got and I'm just amazed by the range of expressions that he's able to bring to his character and the real deep sense of reality that, that you get watching him act. He's really, truly a great actor. And so that's been a real pleasure to work with somebody of that caliber, yeah, for sure. We've, we have really wonderful young actors playing right. the Marines. Right. Uh, Greg Duke, Andres Perez Molina, Raihan Baki, and Andrew Anachi are just fabulous. They're all great. Uh, talk about working with them because you, you really had a hands-on um, way of working with the cast and really allowing everyone to collaborate. Yeah, that was important to me was not to be a, a, a dictator, you know. I really wanted these young guys to be able to channel whatever they felt their character was about. To offer lines, to offer body posture and gesture and, you know, phraseology. Each in their own character brought just a lot of depth to it that I don't think you as the scriptwriter or me as the director really knew was there. It's very different yeah. on the page than right. actually right. filming it. Um, and John J. Pistone, who stepped in as right. Sergeant O'Brien, just brought such authenticity. He's an ex-military man. Pistone came along by accident, and he turned out to be very good. Yeah, he was great. What can you say? 